Papa Blue. Papa, Papa Blue. Blue. So, so the real question that, uh, and I'm, I'm talking to you, the viewers out there, keep a, a note, keep a tally. How many players will get taken down to Papa Blue Zone? How many players are going to lose their life this game to the Blue Zone alone? Dukes, if I had to guess, okay. if I had to guess, I'm going to say eight. I'm going to say eight. What's your number? What's your number? Well, the thing is this. As soon as we said Blue Zone, we just saw we saw everybody there uh, sitting on the couch. They were, they, they were immediately pondering that same question because that's, that's going to be the big one. You say eight, yeah. I'm going to be extra toxic. I'm going to say half the lobby, baby. Half oh, the on, dang dude. lobby. I wouldn't doubt it. I'm not. I'm yeah. telling you, one, we've seen it before. Don't act like it's all different, you know, yeah. because I'll tell you what, if it's going to happen on any map, it's going to happen right here, especially if this circle goes on to that northwestern island. That is the zone that when I've talked to every competitive IGL and player, they say this that's the circle that they hate the most in all of Pokemon, but they don't have to worry about it. Because this zone is going to be going onto the main island. But we'll see if we see some, you know, kind of sketchy uh, shifts later on the match. Who knows, though? Somebody, I put a picture of me predicting with my crystal ball earlier today. Somebody said, how much water in Sandhawk? And this was about two or three hours ago. I said 15%, okay. Jukes. I said 15%. I got to say, there's 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 a good 15%. Uh, hey, just, hey, just putting it out there. Very important thing to note though, Archer Gaming. I got the opportunity to speak to the coach. They said okay. week one, they had a ton of pressure on them. I mean, this is their first world event, so they had a ton of pressure, and they, they lost tempo with their play style. They, they lost their stride. They were caught off guard by how fast the other teams are when it comes to their rotations, when it comes to their looting, and just the general uh, team fights. But this week, Archer Gaming, they are prepared, baby. They are prepared. They did not make week number one Super Weekend. They're looking to change that here today. Easy to say it, but it's a lot harder to see it, baby. We got to be able to see them do it, and I'm looking forward to it. And it, I, I talk about pressure a lot. You know, I played, uh, you know, competitive. I played in a global land before for PUBG Mobile, and it, the pressure is intense. It is a huge factor, and I think that's why we see a lot of the same teams uh, that have been playing this uh, at this high level for so long have success purely to the fact that they're used to that pressure. They've been in these situations multiple times. So for Archer, you know, for them to, to hear them say that, especially considering that this is their first global land, I'm not shocked by any means. I mean, saying that, you know, they felt the pressure, I think is an understatement for sure. But hey, second week, got to show up right here, right now. Show up, and, and that's what they promised uh, Papa Dave. They promised Papa Dave they will show up. So... Let us see, and hey, man, I, I just love, I just love flex, because it is definitely. Well, let me ask you this, Dave. Percent. Ask me. Ask let me, me ask you this, because you me. you nailed your crystal ball's been on point so far. Okay, you've been. been you've been crushing the predictions. Now, Archer Gaming told you that they were gonna pop off. Mm. What does your crystal ball say, though? I think Archer Gaming they're gonna get three kills this game at least. How about okay. that? Okay. It's a little, it's a little foggy. It's a, a little, little bit fuzzy. of a cop out. Oh, oh, yeah, a little fuzzy across the ball. That's fine. But hey, I'll take hey. it. Three kills at least, eight. all right? Eight. Th getting three kills in this lobby, that ain't easy, period. Oh. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anybody says. It's tough to get even one kill at this high level. So if you're able to pull off three, uh, it's not too bad. We'll see, though. Kaofsky oh, no. might just catch one wide in the open. Oh, my goodness. Talk about free dinner right there. And uh, looks like it was going to be a smoothie because that's blend taken out first. Catch him outside, man. Hey, it's Stan Hawk. We, we, we got that papaya. It is, it is abundant everywhere. And DRS did not qualify for Super Weekend 1. Another team. Another team. And right there, it, it, that to me was a blind, a blind push, a blind rotate. We saw him, you know, just full-on auto running, uh, trying to get into a better position. And not checking the P's and Q's, man. You got to look around. Oh, like man. we were talking about earlier on, that eye icon. You could, you could run forward and still look around. You could still look around. And it's just about, it comes down to just awareness. You know, you got to be aware of your surroundings. And if DRS could, uh, could accomplish that here in this lobby, just the fact of being a little more aware, I think they can go far. I mean, they're a team. They have what it takes, Jukes. We've seen them. I mean, shoot, they qualified for this. I mean, they True. qualified for the best teams in the world. So they definitely have those skills required. They just need to, like you said, kind of shake off those nerves a little bit.
I don't know about it's just nerves. To me, that's just like a lazy rotation. I mean, that that, that kind of stuff works, you know, if you're playing a classic or if you're playing, a, you know, a scrim or even, you know, a little bit lower tier competitive. But this is the PMGC. If you look, even in the early rotations, look at Bigatron, look at all these big teams right now. When they push, they're pushing almost shoulder to shoulder together. Even on early rotations, you cannot... You cannot relax even for a little bit or just like as you saw, you're going to get caught and taken out instantly because I mean these guys at this level, if they see you running out in the open, they are going to beam you. So yeah, you got to be diligent from the start of the game until you're in the lobby. Yeah, and just to add on to your point about Bigatron, like when they are pushing, uh, they are close to each other, but they're also zigzagging, they're moving back and forth, they're jumping up and down, so they're going to make sure if they are spotted, like we just saw right there, if they are spotted, you can't track them that easily, right? You can't get all your shots, you can't unload the whole clip onto them because they're going to be zigging and zagging, juking and jiving, you know, they got those hot feet going on. Especially in Sandhawk, because you just you have to, like you can just tell like their movement, like the way they're moving. They have they they're almost moving as if they they think that there's eyes on them at all times. And in reality, in Sandhawk, you could absolutely have that. The second you cross even a little bit, you could instantly just get three peaked and get taken out. So for them pushing shoulder to shoulder, let's just say if they do get caught out, get knocked, you'll see them instantly throw those smoke smokes down, put some suppressive fire, and try to get that reset. But if you're just out there running in the open, separate from your team, you get knocked, you're done for. You're done for. And that's one member down for the rest of the map. And when you're playing it with these kind of teams, you want to have that full squad towards end game. And talking about having the full squad towards the end game, A1 Esports, last game, they had the full team, late game, they just kind of got pinched, right? They got pinched. They got stuck in a very challenging uh, edge when it comes to the zone, and they got gate kept very hard. But my well, point being, my point being, though, hold on, my point being is that they survived to late game with four up, and, and it's already a big difference than when we're looking at them from last week. That's true. I mean, it's a big improvement regardless. And I think that they had a great position right there in Miramar because when that next zone came up, they were dead center. The issue is... With all that open space, every single team was just looking at them in the wide open, and they just got picked apart piece by piece. So sometimes, you know, having that set of the circle doesn't isn't really the best uh, in certain positions. And I think that they that was a uh, that was where they kind of suffered on that one. But regardless, still the finish where they finished uh, in that last map, it's a it's a really strong one for A1. Yeah, A1, big improvements, and something that really stuck with me. Uh, after talking to Team Secrets coach, the mindset this week, it's not a sprint. This tournament, PMGC, is not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. So for them to be able to improve week to week, that shows me, and this is a different team. You know, I'm talking about the, the conversation between Team Secret and me, but I, I'm adding it. I'm putting it on A1 Esports because, to me, the improvements show that they are in it for the long haul. Yeah, the, the only issue is that, like, you know, they, have, they only have two days. That's the big thing. That is true. They have they have today and they have tomorrow. You have to pop off. You have no choice. Like you want to adapt all you want, but you have to finish top 16 at the end of these two days. Otherwise, you're going to be out of the super weekend, and that is devastating to your total score. We've seen that over and over again. So uh, that's the that's kind of like the asterisk I think about PMGC is you you do have time to get together, but when it comes to week play. You, you cannot mess around. you got to end up in the top 16. I like, your, I like your use of asterisks right there. I approve. I approve. So, next zone will be uh, closing on in. Execute. High 10 up there. They're going to be pushing on across that bridge here very shortly. Arrow Wolf all the way down there in the south. Taking their sweet, sweet time. Let's see, though. Next zone, where will it go? Up there Ooh. to the north. It's honestly, it's not that bad of a zone for a lot of these teams right now. I mean, it looks like they all pretty much predicted exactly where it was going to go. So it's going to be a party in paradise. We still have all the teams up right here right now. That's a really good circle shift for Execute, considering that, you know, they like to go to that northwestern uh, island because when that circle goes there, they have a massive advantage. But if it goes off... They have to sneak in, to crawl their way in. And it looks like with that zone rotation, it shouldn't be that tough for them. So some teams uh, that might have a challenge. Uh, my eyes right now, Elitist United, all the way down there in the south. 
They are, you know, one mountain between them and Bigatron. And if anything, we saw last game, their hesitation in these team fights. They just cannot come into these games. And, and when they get that initial knock, they need to take advantage of it. And one team that is going to make sure to not allow them to even get that in the first place is Bigatron. So that might be a huge pop-off fight down there to the south as both teams are going to be making their way on in. Power Triple Eight, though, up here on the high ground, overlooking footballist. Okay. Yeah, I think this is that cr that crucial zone. I mean, this is the difficult part about Sandhawk is that every single circle, if you guys look at the clock, it's faster here than anywhere else. When those zones sh shift, you have less than a minute. You have to start running pretty much instantly the second that zone shifts. And if you're getting gate kept by five teams, guess what? You can't run towards them. You uh -oh. just got to make a play. Oh, oh, or possibly drive right in between Bigatron. And they're going to pick up a two-piece just like that, trying to get the three. And they're going to get it, baby. That's what they ordered right up. And uh, that's going to be three points for Bigatron. I, and I love this. And, and this goes to show you why Bigatron, why they are at the top. We were talking about this last game on Miramar. Some teams, they like to flex that they are in their position, right? They like to take shots and make sure teams, uh, they know, like, hey, we are here. And then other teams, they like to lay the trap. They like to be patient and wait till the exact moment to just let it rip and get those points on the board. Bigatron, they know how to do both of those strategies. They know how to do them both. They know how to go for placement points. They know how to get kills. They're just an all-around great squad here. I mean, it's like a fox, right? When it's time to get aggressive, they do it. When it's time to play super sneaky and passive, they're able to do that so well. And to have that kind of synergy, to flip that switch on and off at the speed that they're able to do it, I think that's why they're a, a global championship team. And they're trying to have that continued success. Arrowwolf Lemax, we saw them rotate right on by. And I think the only reason why we saw that rotation is because it was really outside of this zone. But that just goes to show you you cannot relax at this high level. You have to always assume that there's teams everywhere and driving, just kind of full sending it into the next zone like that, uh, it's not going to work out for you. And I think they just learned a lesson right there. So my question for you to pick your, your brain from your, uh, your pro player experience, okay. you know, would scouting Again, have saved Arrowwolf right there? I mean, at, at this point, you have to push every single hill, stop, scout, push together as a squad and then just push up little by little at especially at this high level you cannot just you can't rotate blind if you rotate blind you're gonna get your whole entire squad wiped out and just like that they lost three members so uh you could just see btr i mean sure could they have gotten a vehicle and just sent it on up absolutely but they know better they're gonna go ahead and just push in little by little they know that they'd rather die uh you know shooting a gun than driving in a vehicle and with this circle shifting towards them it's going to pay off. And uh -oh. we shall see. A fight, though. Nova, Lubies. Here they go. Lufa able to get that first knock. Huge fight right here between two major squads with Blue Bees. Oh, my God. Anochan had the DBS. And Nova taken out by Blue Bees. Unfortunately, though, Lufa ends up getting caught in the process. Still, I think, a major win for this Blue Bee squad. Yeah, Ido Chan right there with the double barrel shotgun. And this is also something that I've been waiting for because just looking at uh, the region as a whole, Japan, they, they love, they love that shotgun. They love getting up close and personal and just spraying it in your face right there. And right there, that goes to show you why. Because up close, just like that, you're bound to get one of these slugs right there in the chest. And depending on what vest you have, depending on what helmet you have, it could be the difference between one or two shots. Especially at Sandhawk, I mean, you're not really using, uh, I mean, crazy long range shots. I mean, at this distance, an M4 is going to work perfect for pretty much almost all range. So to have that shotgun for those just in case up close battles, it could definitely make all the difference. And I think that's exactly what it did right there. And right now, RRQ and Blue Bees, dead center of this circle. So even though they lost one member, Blue Bees are in a great position for this next zone. Great spot, and right there, I mean, just a uh, confidence booster in general, right there. I mean, to, to get a couple points. Blue Bees, this is something that they told us last week that they wanted to kind of work on, and that was their aggression and their ability to defend pushes. Right there, I think they, they are showing us, okay, you know, slowly but surely, we are shaking off the pressure, shaking off those nerves, and we're going to show the world 
why we made it here. We're going to show the world what the Japan region has to offer. Well, I mean, we take out a squad like Nova XQF. I mean, that's a, that's a, I think that speaks uh, a lot of words easily. I mean, that is a major squad. And for them to get taken out early uh, by Blue Beast, you got to be pumped up for sure. Next zone, starting to close. This is where it starts to get hectic, Dave. Once you know, once we hit zone five, that's where Papa Blue Zone is going to come in and start wreaking havoc. But we'll have to see right now as these teams are playing really, really carefully, waiting for where that next zone is going to shift. Yeah, we see uh, Bigatron. They are going to be spotting out up there on the hill. Elitist United team. Information is key right now in this game as we have 15 teams alive as these zones continue to shrink on in. Honestly, it's anyone's game. And oh, the scooter, the last member. Ooh. And at the end of the day, Bigatron eventually getting the squad wipe right there. The squad wipe. Did you not learn your lesson, Potato? Did you not just see your whole team get wiped in a vehicle rotation? You know, and just like that, he comes in a moped and next zone. the last, yeah, last point. But here goes next. Oh my! You talk about next zone, Camp Bravo. That's a hard shift for a lot of squads. Navi, Archer, Loop, Scottson, everybody's gonna have to push in. And RRQ and Bluebees, you know that they're gonna be turning right set round and ready to cake keep the absolute heck out of them. I said half the zone, half the half the lobby is gonna get taken out the blue zone, and it might just happen here, Dave. Yeah, I'm not sure what type of information RRQ and Bluebees have on each other, but honestly, if they have an idea that somebody might be over there, let it be. Let it be, because you need to be looking out there to the west and just spraying down every single squad that tries to rotate on into this new zone. Also, Bigatron, they saw the shift, immediately sent it on into Camp Bravo, so they're going to be holding that one down. And they got that whole entire spot for free. So that is a great, great spot and great pickup for them. DRS getting a great pickup on Dukovsky. Catching him looking in the wrong direction. DRS says, not. we're right over here, buddy. And that's going to be one member down for loops. DRS, though, did give away those, their position. And they're running on the open now. And Federal is making them pay for it. The North is going to be a bloodbath. We got A1 Esports, we got Power AAA, Navi making the push on end, Team Secret and Footballers taking them shots back and forth, and then Archer Gaming, of course. So five to six teams up here to the North. It's going to heat up. Let's go. It's heating up for sure. You can see Soul K with that Uzi switching over, trying to get that shot onto, onto Yuhai. He does get some good damage, but this is a big battle. Oh! Lutz with the shimmies! Almost gets the crazy return knock. Not fast enough, though, as Shots was just waiting for him right there. There goes football to the reset. Oh, Lava's in with a great angle. Catches Yuhai off the roof. And they're gonna he's going to have to try to crawl back in, but I don't think Shots can get him from here. Dude right there saw those bullets whizzing past their head like bam, bam, dodging them left and right. That was actually pretty, pretty hectic uh, and, and amazing to see. Footballists, though, they are going to have the opportunity to kind of pull back just a little bit after that one. So we are going to have a standstill on in between those two teams. But Navi, they were pushing across this open terrain. They're going to be backstabbed from Archer. Yeah, this blue zone is putting so much pressure on all these teams right now. And you can just see Archer is trying to push up in the open here. Oh, and they, they this is just free pickings for all the teams that are in the blue zone already. Navi's having to decide what decision to make. There goes Execute, trying to push out as well. Fight's going all over the place, Dave. Yeah, footballists, uh, they heard the shots erupting right there from Team Secret. Team Secret, they were trying to third party that Navi fight, and they used that time to surprise them. Yes, they were just in a fight a couple moments ago, but Team Secret, they thought it died out. They thought it sizzled on out, and football has taken full advantage of that one. Well, we'll see what happens right now. This next circle has an insane shift. It actually goes off of Camp Bravo. RRQ's the only team in it right now. You can see Godset Navy trying to snake his way up on the Bluebees. This is a huge fight for this position into this next zone. Godset absolutely needs this right now. Divine though, woo, what a shot through the grass. Able to catch one. Davey bounces up. The crazy, crazy trades right now. <laughs> Divine out here with the M4. I mean, you talk about shots through the grass. I'm looking at Divine mowing down the grass right there. And Blue Bee's still going to be in the shack right there on the edge of the new blue zone. It looks like God sent going to be sending it on the northern end of that boulder. 
Oh, but Archer Gaming in the mayhem right there between that fight. They were caught off guard on the outskirts just a couple moments ago. We're starting to see some crazy rotations. Bigatron Esports have pushed out of Camp Bravo. They do have this hill now. They are going to be looking at Elitis United. There goes Zuxi. That was a stun grenade right there. That was just kind of, I bet you that was a warning one. Goats, he, that's not a warning nade at all. Not able to hit though. And you can just see, this is, you cannot be in this blue zone right now. This hurts too bad. You got to get in the circle fast. Next zone does going up. RRQ, their compound is right there on the edge. The main story right now, Bigatron. Can they cut the head off the snake of Elitist United right here? They're going to be closer to the zone. Elitist United, they are waiting this one out, trying to get as much information as possible before making the play. They can't wait too long, though. 19 seconds left on the clock. They got to get moving right now. They have the hill advantage, so they could definitely get some shots, but it looks like they'd rather play this passive and wait for the zone. Oh, ne that's, never mind. Cray uh, over there on that big angle does get one knock with that with that Q-Bizzle, the QBZ, Micro Boy. Looks like trying to pre-fire. Gonna get some shots out there. He's gonna get this next zone. RRQ though, they have been big chilling as this zone has just been locked onto them. Not only big chilling, but also big grilling up there as they are roasting this chicken dinner. Seven kills so far on the end of RRQ. The main focus yeah, though, Bigatron. What's the play? What is the play? See right now, Leeds United, they are just running out in the open now, really, really late. It looks like they may have passed all their heals off to very nice, as he's gonna be going for the heal strat right here. Bigatron, they'd rather just gun it down, and that's exactly what they're doing, picking up some more kills on these Elitist United team that's running in really, really late. They're gonna pick up three right there. Oh, Zuxi though, looks like he got spotted from Bluebees from across the way. So Bigatron, I mean, they, I'm not gonna call it, but they pretty much won this fight between these two teams. We can see there in the bottom right hand of the corner, the mayhem unfolding as Godsent. They are getting sandwiched right now from two members of RRQ and the Blue Bees. And Godsent, see you later, kids. Back to the lobby. They are taken down and out. Four Ooh. teams to go. Add very nice to that one as well. And guess what? The zone. Goes on to RRQ. Can we get some zone magnets in the chat? They, this is their game to win. All they got to do is execute it perfectly. And you can just see year 11 got that nade. Switches to FPP. All right, gets a better spot. Oh, just a little short onto Ido Chan. Gets, tries to go for the second one right here. This is going to be the one to hit. Looks like it is a little short as well. But man, they have this blue zone held down. Bigatron, I have to run in the wide open. So we see three teams, but there's four. We got footballers. They got a solo out there in the blue, healing on up. Zuxi going to be pushing on in, spotted. Oh, but from the blue, some shots trying to play spoiler. Not able to be successful. RRQ, 10 kills. Can they get the chicken dinner? Oh, looks like they have this one in the bag. I mean, this one was gift wrapped to them by Papa Blue Zone itself. And now it's just, I, I don't chat, just chilling all by himself. Healing up and watching this RRQ team get the first place chicken dinner. Will they get 14 kills or end it on 13? Idol Chan, will they decide to go out to the blue, deny the kill point on Here, the side of RRQ? Out. They want it. Oh, the blue zone. They the want that zone. point. Oh, they got the point. That was almost scary, though. He had that shotgun ready.